Hello and thank you for joining me in yet another video about being intentional, about living your best possible life and learning to make the kind of choices which lead you to the decisions which are really good for you long term and benefit you in terms of where you want to go with your life and the goals you set for yourself. And today I'm going to try and tackle something a little bit different, which is a little bit longer and a little bit more complex. And the video itself is going to be a little bit longer. And also I'm trying a slightly different video technique, so a lot of new things coming together in one post. Do let me know how you find a new video in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And don't forget to comment and share the video if you find it to be of value to you. And I know I'm, I'm shooting the gun here because you don't even yet know what we're going to tackle. But what we're going to discuss today is who we are. And I know this is a huge subject and it's complex, so it makes it hugely complex pun intended, but really if we don't understand who we are then it becomes really difficult for us to know how to behave, how to react, how to actually live our values. And I know the phrase, this is not who we are, has become sort of uh, a little bit blasé these days because every leader, every politician throws it out the moment there's a mass shooting somewhere, the moment there's an incident of racism, the moment there is something which breaks the norms and destroys our sense of continuity and makes us feel that the reality which we're living is a little bit more threatening and a little bit more uncertain than what we thought it was. The moment the phrase is said, and sometimes we say it to ourselves, I'm sure, every time we see something on TV which doesn't represent us, or at least we feel it doesn't represent our values. We say this is not who we are. Now the moment we say this, we are essentially articulating a form of wishful thinking in order to calm ourselves. And most of the time, in most cases, it works and allows us to get on with our lives. And here's the thing now, and this is really difficult to swallow, really difficult to understand, and I really want you to grapple with it. When you see these things which are extreme, when you see racism, um, sort of inequality, injustice, hatred, the craziness which we saw on January 6th in the capital, in the seat of democracy, in the largest, most powerful country on earth, when you see the overt racism that takes place in, in England, in the, U in the United Kingdom, of a Brexit. When you see these things, unfortunately, this is exactly who we are. Or, to be more precise, this is who we are becoming. And why am I saying this? By the time we see them and we become aware of them and their impact, they have migrated from the fringe where we could perhaps easily dismiss them and they've become part of everyday life. And if you think about it a little bit, you realize that if so many of us are not represented by these things, if there's so much incremental accrued resistance to them and they still happen, well, they then represent exactly who we're becoming. And this makes it problematic for you, for me, for everyone who's half decent, half thoughtful and doesn't want to live in a world where you have to watch your back all the time, where you have to ostracize everybody who is different from you, whether it's religion or skin color or eye color or whatever. Well, it is problematic because then it begs the question of what are we to do? What can we possibly do? The world is too big for any of us to change and I agree with you on that. Well, here's how things work. The world which we live in is the world which we create collectively through our shared values, our shared understanding and our actions. The world which we will live in, the world that's coming, is what we are creating in the present through the continuity of those actions, through the continued projection of those values. So, if you want to live in a world which really represents you, if you want to live in a world which reflects your values, reflects your sense of equality, reflects your sense of um, egalitarianism towards your fellow men, and you want to live in a more equitable society, then it is up to you and me and every individual who watches this video, essentially, to do something about it. Now you will say, we're all struggling to pay the rent, keep our jobs, 
keep our heads together in order to live our lives. And I totally agree, none of this is easy for any of us. But if we don't take on the responsibility of actually doing something about it, then we should have no expectation of anything being done about it beyond what is being done about it already, which is clearly not enough, because we're all witnessing the disintegration of the world which we had expected to see. What should we do about it? Well, if you want to become an activist, if you want to take to the streets, if you want to join causes, if you want to donate money to specific causes, well, you're always free to do so, and that will go some way towards that. But that is not enough. This is like going to the gym for an hour a day. An hour a day represents 2% of our day. It is not enough to undo the bad things which happen to our body and mind by sitting down the rest of the day and making bad dietary decisions when it comes to our choices of what we're going to eat. So, to get back on track, if you want to see that world which you want to see, then you and I and everybody else should actively engage in sustained, sustainable, small acts of be small behaviors, basically, which help those values materialize and manifest. Uh, things which we can do, perhaps, and the, the tiny things, the behavior we exhibit towards each other, even when we're stressed, the way we address each other, even when we're stressed, the way we talk to each other on social media, the way we um, sort of uh, share information which is positive and comment on information which is negative. Now, all those things on a cumulative basis become that reality. And I know I've given you such tiny little things to do. Ultimately, it's for you to decide how to amplify these things. You, each of you, will make a decision according to your own understanding, according to your own ambition, according to your own view of the world, according to how you see yourself in the world, according to your expectations of the world that's coming, and according to what you feel comfortable with. That's why I'm not being very prescriptive. What you cannot afford to do, however, is simply say, this is not who we are, thinking that that's it. It's basically giving you a carte blanche to carry on as usual because you feel that what you've seen doesn't actually represent who you are inside and doesn't represent who you think you are. We are not good people right now. Why can we say that? Because the world which we live in is not quite the world we should be living in. So we should all be thinking of the small things which we need to do and the small ways which we need to behave in order to make this world better. I really hope this has helped. I know I've given you a lot to think about. I know I haven't given you many answers. I know you keep emailing me with questions. Please keep on doing that. Uh, it helps me put together these videos. It helps me put together this particular video based on a number of your emails. I've got a lot more stuff which I'm working on and I will be putting out over the next few weeks. There is a lot more material and links in the description box below on YouTube. Stay safe. Stay thoughtful, be intentional, love you all, see you next week.